Hello, I am Dr. Rashid Ahmed from the Department of Physics of Kohat University of Science and Technology. In the subject of Mathematical Methods of Physics 2 with the course code PHY222, we are at the lecture number 7 and the topic is Sound as Fourier Series. In our previous lectures, we have learned that we can expand a function in terms of a Fourier series which is uh, the combination of sines and cosine functions. Then we have also learned that how to uh, determine uh, and find out uh, the coefficients of each term in Fourier series and uh, then uh, apply it to any physical problem and analyze it. In today's lecture, uh, I am going to tell you that how we can apply Fourier series to uh, the problem of a sound. So we can represent sound as a Fourier series and then can analyze it. So in order to do it, uh, let's begin and uh, take an example of uh, some sound and we know that the axis pressure above and below atmospheric pressure uh, can be represented as uh, a function of time uh, and uh, this actually creates a sound. So take for example a tuning fork which is vibrating and then uh, this vibrating tuning fork is actually uh, uh, pressing against uh, the air molecules and uh, creating a pressure, uh, a low pressure and a high pressure regimes in, uh, in the air and then these uh, uh, variations in pressure are uh, um, traveling uh, as uh, a sound waves uh, in the uh, air medium and reaches our ears and then we can hear that sound. So we can uh, represent uh, sound as uh, a function of time uh, by representing a pressure as a function of time. So now uh, once we have uh, uh, learned that, that this pressure uh, which is created inside any medium as a function of time uh, is actually representing sound, then we can uh, express this function, uh, uh, this pressure as a function of time uh, as uh, a Fourier series. So to do this, let's first expand this uh, uh, pressure function uh, uh, into uh, and uh, sketch the uh, diagram of it, of its expansion. So you can see that on x axis we have t in uh, time in seconds and then uh, on y axis we have uh, pressure uh, in some uh, useful units uh, or some arbitrary units. Then you can see that uh, this is uh, a periodic function, uh, this uh, p of t is a periodic function. You can see its value is uh, changing as uh, time is passing on but changing periodically. Now what we want to do is to analyze uh, this uh, sound wave coming to us and uh, see that what is the fundamental, you can see that there are uh, different kind of uh, frequencies involved. So we want to know that what is the fundamental frequency and uh, what are the overtones or harmonics and uh, which harmonic is the most significant harmonic and which we hear. Uh, remember that uh, when we hear something then this sound is made of uh, not only one frequency but it's made of uh, infinite number of frequencies and uh, some of them are uh, significant uh, which makes uh, most of the sound uh, and uh, some of them are uh, not that uh, um, uh, that strong. So in order to find out uh, which overtone or harmonic is the most important one we have to expand this uh, function, uh, pressure function uh, as a Fourier series and uh, uh, then uh, analyze it uh, and see that which term is uh, the significant term and which one is uh, the fundamental one. So we have done the first uh, thing that we have sketched uh, this uh, uh, pressure term, uh, pressure function over here and uh, from this now. Uh, we will be able to uh, uh, to represent it as a Fourier series. Okay, so uh, as I said that next thing is to find out what frequencies uh, we hear and uh, for this purpose uh, the, we from this sketch want to expand it in a Fourier series 
and uh, this period of p of t as you can see has a period of 1 by this pressure function p of t has a period of 1 by 262 as uh, was um, as it was uh, evident from uh, from the sketch of this function and uh, here uh, l is therefore is equal to 1 over 524 because it was equal to uh, you have to multiply it uh, with a, with the 2 and uh, so we have uh, uh, sine function over here uh, which is uh, sin n pi x pi l and uh, becomes a sin uh, 524 n pi t so these are the harmonics are the, this a periodic function sin periodic function so uh, we will expand this uh, p of t in terms of uh, sines uh, with this period so uh, only sine terms are involved uh, so we observe that pt is an odd function remember that in our previous lecture we have learnt about uh, odd functions and we have learnt about that how we can represent odd uh, functions as a Fourier series so in this particular example of uh, sound wave now this uh, uh, function uh, p of t uh, pressure function is is, uh, uh, is is an odd function uh, and which involves only sign terms so there are only sign terms involved so uh, in order to calculate the harmonics or overtones now we need only uh, b and coefficients because it is an odd function and uh, all the uh, uh, even function coefficients like a and r must be equal to zero because this is uh, expanded only in terms of a sine functions so we need to calculate only bn since we know the general formula for the bn so we will now use it and we also know the period of this function so now we will use this general formula and uh, will calculate uh, our uh, coefficients so let us calculate the Fourier coefficients since we know uh, that we only need uh, bn so this is the general formula for the uh, coefficient bn as you can see over here it is an integral pt and sin uh, 2 pi uh, 524 n pi uh, t and here this n is important and by putting the value of n uh, ranging from 0 to 1 we will be able to calculate all the coefficients but let us first simplify uh, this uh, integral over here and uh, we can simplify it uh, by, uh, by splitting it and we can uh, split this as you can see uh, into two parts and then uh, try to solve this uh, independently and uh, uh, if we solve them uh, these uh, independently these two integrals these are not very difficult because these are just uh, as you can see the sine integrals and uh, after uh, uh, integrating them uh, and putting the limits you will be able to calculate both integrals so if you calculate uh, both of these integrals uh, what you will get is uh, this term this first term comes out and the second term comes out and uh, after putting all the limits and all after making these calculations and uh, uh, we uh, we uh, we get uh, from the further uh, simplification uh, this form over here uh, in terms of cos uh, cos n pi by 2 and in terms of cos n n pi and uh, from this it's important to calculate uh, first few values because uh, we will expand this uh, this into series and uh, the higher uh, terms or higher harmonics are usually are not that important so it's uh, interesting to see uh, only first few values so what we do that uh, we calculate some uh, some initial values of this series for example b1 when we put n is equal to 1 so the coefficient b1 is uh, comes equal to if you put all these values and make this simple calculations uh, as you can see it will be 1 over 4 pi similarly uh, uh, you can calculate uh, the next uh, value that is b2 and if you put uh, put the value of n is equal to 2 and make these calculations uh, so this particular value is uh, comes out for b2 and similarly b3 and uh, b4 uh, b5 b6 b7 and b8 so in this way you can calculate as many terms as you want but in order to check the behavior of this sound wave uh, we need only these few uh, first few terms so now uh, we have these terms so let's make uh, substitution into the uh, Fourier uh, series 
and uh, if we check out for the complete expansion uh, what we see that this is the pressure term uh, if you remember this is the pressure function and if we put in all the uh, seven or eight uh, coefficients because now we have calculated the coefficients so you get these uh, terms over here so this is the first term and uh, then this is the second term uh, this is the first term for n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 8 and so on so you see all these uh, terms over here this uh, first term is called a fundamental term yeah mm, uh, the uh, principal harmonic or fundamental term uh, as you can see over here but uh, remember uh, if you look at uh, all these terms that you will find out that this is not the most significant uh, contribution to this uh, pressure function because if you look at the second term uh, this is uh, uh, 30 multiplied by n divided by 2 although this term also multiplied by 30 but it is divided by 6 so we see that this overtone is the strongest overtone or this frequency or harmonic is the strongest ha harmonic uh, uh, we are uh, hearing so we are listening to this uh, this one uh, this strongest one and uh, we, we we call it a strongest term although we have uh, other harmonics as well for example uh, this and this and also all other harmonics but we see accompanied with this fundamental one this is the most significant uh, overtone or harmonic which we are listening to so um, by this way you have seen that uh, this uh, any function which was actually a pressure function we have expanded it in terms of uh, four year series and we calculated the coefficients and now we know that which term is contributing more uh, to the sound uh, which we are listening so you see that this is uh, the term which uh, which is most important uh, and we also know that what is the fundamental uh, term involved over here okay so after this analysis which we have done uh, in uh, in for the sound wave uh, we can also uh, analyze uh, some relative frequencies uh, for example in the case of first few terms you can see the uh, for n is equal to 1 we have the relative frequency 1 and 2 for 2 uh, you have this the uh, most important one and for 3 and 4 is 0 and so on so uh, so we have we can uh, relative intensities can also be calculated and from this you uh, already see that the second term over here is uh, the strongest one because of this frequency the intensity of this uh, this term is uh, uh, most and is the strongest term some of them are even equal to zero and some some of them are very low and if you uh, i mean uh, every ter every term can be analyzed uh, independently if you look at the sixth term this is the second most uh, important <coughs> overtone or harmonic uh, involved in this um, in this uh, sound wave and uh, others are uh, uh, almost negligible and this third one is also uh, is, uh, is uh, having some contribution but if you analyze this then you will see that accompanied with this fundamental one we have uh, three uh, significant contributions and the rest of them are uh, so less that that they can be neglected so you you have seen that how Fourier series helping us and in, in analyzing uh, this uh, sound uh, wave and similarly <clears throat> this Fourier series has applications in many physical uh, problems for example we can use it for the voltage uh, uh, and uh, for current or uh, or so many other um, physical uh, uh, problems light waves uh, sound waves uh, all electromagnetic waves uh, and uh, we can analyze and uh, determine uh, uh, determine the uh, uh, or find out the answers to uh, to the questions uh, relating to this these harmonics okay so uh, uh, having done this now uh, uh, we have covered the first part of uh, our uh, lecture and which I have shown you that how Fourier series can be applied uh, to one physically uh, important problem that is of sound and how we can uh, analyze the sound coming to us and we can determine that uh, which frequency we are he hearing and which is the most significant contribution and uh, which are uh, not uh, that uh, relevant and can be ignored. 
in the second part of uh, the lecture uh, there is uh, we will talk about uh, a theorem parseval's theorem um, it's an important theorem uh, which uh, which tells us that uh, if uh, uh, we take the average of the square of a function this is uh, uh, then equal to the uh, the average of the terms we calculate so uh, i will uh, derive this for you and i will also show you that why uh, this theorem is important so uh, in principle it gives us the relationship between the average of the square of a function and the fourier coefficients as i have uh, already mentioned uh, that uh, this uh, uh, theorem establishes uh, a relationship between uh, average of the square of, uh, of the function one thing uh, to note here is that uh, we will not use this theorem to calculate Fourier coefficients we can do that uh, easily from uh, Fourier coefficient formulas we will not use that over here but uh, we will use this theorem to get more physical insight more insight into uh, physical problems uh, uh, about uh, uh, the, about having Fourier coefficients already determined and connecting uh, connecting uh, them to the uh, average of uh, the square of functions, we will be able able to get more insight. So rather than using it uh, as a tool for calculating Fourier coefficients, uh, we will be using it as a tool uh, for uh, physical analysis. So that was uh, uh, a point about uh, uh, Parseval's theorem. So uh, let us consider that we have uh, some function f of x and we have expanded it into a Fourier series. You can see this uh, fundamental one and then uh, uh, cos series and a sine series and uh, we have these coefficients which we can determine. Uh, but the point is over here that we would like to square the left hand side and then take the average and see that what is its relationship. Uh, to the uh, to the Fourier coefficients on the right hand side. So uh, we square f of x and uh, average over interval minus uh, pi and pi, for example. So uh, <coughs> and then uh, we see that uh, the average of f of x uh, square of this function over here is uh, one over two pi and uh, minus pi to pi. Uh, f of x square dx this is the uh, we we know how to calculate the average of a function uh, if you remember so this average of this function is equal to uh, to uh, this for this integral over here so we have calculated the average of a function and now we want to connect this average square of the average of a function or uh, to to the uh, to the fourier coefficients and uh, so if we take there will be many terms as you can uh, you can see over here if we uh, square uh, and then take average then there will be infinite number of terms uh, but uh, we cannot uh, look at into each and every term but we can uh, look and uh, look at into the character of uh, some terms the combined character and then uh, see that what kind of terms actually we will be getting so uh, we will get the average of 1 over 2 a naught square will be equal to uh, 1 over 2 a naught square and then <coughs> so uh, as you can see that we can we will have cos terms and uh, sine terms and when we take the average of the cos terms we will get it equal to a n square into 1 over 2 remember that uh, average of cos square terms or cos terms were equal to 1 over 2 and similarly the average of bn sin nx square is uh, bn square into 1 over 2. So this is uh, roughly the behavior uh, of uh, these terms they fall into three uh, kind of these three categories over here then th this is their average and how they are behaving. So the average values of square of the cross product terms are actually going to 0. Uh, if you take and uh, there will be cross product terms uh, <coughs> because this is uh, squaring and uh, uh, squaring so in squaring because it's the three terms so we will have a cross terms that is the terms involving sine and cos both that will uh, go to zero and that you can check and uh, for example such types uh, of uh, uh, terms uh, we will get uh, two types of them and uh, uh, such type of uh, terms with m is uh, not equal to n uh, we, um, so these uh, average of them will uh, uh, the cross product terms will go to zero 
so then the theorem is that uh, the uh, average of the uh, square of uh, of the of the function or some particular period is uh, like taking the average of uh, uh, first term and then the second term and then the third term and then uh, squaring it so you can see uh, that uh, it is uh, connected to the uh, coefficients of a uh, Fourier series. So uh, this theorem can also be uh, put into a complex form uh, as you know that Fourier series uh, have sine and cosine form and also have a uh, complex form where exponentials are involved and in that case uh, we will have cn uh, for going from minus infinity to plus infinity and the average of f of x square or a some particular period will be equal to this thing. So uh, it is now also important to give you an example and to show you that how uh, physically important this Parseval's theorem is and this example uh, uh, we take uh, this again a pressure uh, sign for the sound uh, waves this pressure term and since it was an odd function so uh, odd function involves only uh, sine, uh, sine terms and uh, bn coefficients and uh, if we uh, take the average on the left side and take this average over here so what we get the average of bn sine square uh, so you see that uh, the uh, what is the meaning of it is that uh, the energy in the function energy is in the function is equal to the energy in the nth term uh, so uh, if we take the square and average you will see that uh, the most important term was the second term uh, so most of the energy uh, was in this uh, overtone and this harmonic so you see that this is the average and uh, square of it so all terms will have energy or intensity uh, but um, uh, and, and distributed but the most important one or the most strongest one will have most of the energy so by this way you see that uh, uh, what are the uh, physical uh, what uh, what we mean uh, uh, by this Parseval's theorem that sometimes we will be interested in to look at uh, that how much energy uh, one term can have then for this we have to calculate these uh, we have to use this Parseval's theorem in order to find out some answer to the physical questions okay so this uh, these are the uh, uh, references we have used so uh, to give you the summary uh, of uh, what we have learned in today's lecture is that uh, we have uh, uh, used um, uh, Fourier series in today's lecture to analyze uh, uh, the sound uh, some particular sound function so we have learned that uh, the any sound is actually um, a, a, an excess excess pressure above the atmospheric pressure uh, in air and uh, since it is a periodic function and it can be represented as a periodic function so we can expand it in uh, this pressure as a function of time and then we can expand it into Fourier series and once we have expanded into Fourier series then the next term uh, thing is to determine the coefficients, uh, different coefficients uh, of uh, each term and uh, we have found out uh, in today's example that it was an odd function uh, involving only uh, sine uh, terms and uh, bn coefficients and after calculating uh, those coefficients we have seen that accompanied with the fundamental there were so many overtones and uh, most of them were not much relevant or, uh, or um, strong but uh, some of them uh, were uh, strongest and uh, this means that these were the frequencies we are actually hearing and then uh, we in the second part of the lecture uh, we have uh, developed and proven you uh, the theorem called the Parseval theorem which is actually connecting the average of uh, square of a function to the Fourier coefficients which means that if average of a four, uh, average of a square of a function represents some physical quantity then we can connect it to the uh, Fourier coefficients and can extract some useful uh, information uh, about uh, about the situation or the uh, uh, problem we are dealing with okay with this uh, i thank you all